In the early 1920s, a young Russian musician physicist named Leon Theremin used the technology of radio electronics to develop the world's first space-controlled musical instrument. He called his instrument the Theremin Vox, or simply the Theremin. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, theremin concerts and demonstrations were presented to enthralled audiences in major European and American cities. For a short time, RCA built and sold theremins under Professor Theremin's license. Then in 1938, Leon Theremin was taken back to Russia by the KGB to develop electronic innovations for the Soviet war effort. Robert Moog has been building theremins and theremin kits since 1954. In addition to theremins, Moog is well known as the developer of the Moog synthesizer. Moog is now president of Big Briar, the leading manufacturer of theremins and theremin kits for musicians worldwide. The theremin is one of the very earliest electronic musical instruments, and yet it's one of the most novel and original in concept. It's the only instrument that I know of which responds directly, continuously, and immediately to every motion of the performer's hands. The elegance of Professor Theremin's original design, which he first developed at the very dawn of electronic technology, has inspired many electronic musical instrument builders like me. It has also inspired some adventurous and talented musicians, people who have explored the musical possibilities of the theremin and who have developed playing techniques for the rest of us to enjoy and adopt. Lydia Kavina is one of these musicians. Classically trained at the Moscow Music Academy and the Tchaikovsky State Conservatory in Moscow, from which she graduated summa cum laude, by the way, Lydia began her study of the theremin with Professor Theremin himself when she was only nine years old. Her stage career as a thereminist began at the age of 14. In the course of her career, she has given some 400 live performances and radio and television broadcasts in the USSR, Europe, and the United States. It is with great pleasure that I invite you to meet Lydia Kavanagh. Lydia will demonstrate for you the basic techniques of theremin playing that she has developed. Thank you, Bob. I'd like to introduce you to the basic principles of playing the theremin. I'm going to lead you through the basic steps that you should take to learn to play the instrument. The theremin responds to any motion. It's very important that except for the player, nobody should stand within a radius of six feet or so from the instrument. How do we find the correct pitches? Only by ear. This means that we have to listen to ourselves very carefully. The theremin is tuned so that by extending our right arm towards the right antenna, we're able to produce all the sounds that we will be playing, from the highest to the lowest pitch. Our position relative to the instrument is determined by what pitch register we're going to play in. If we are playing in the bass register, we will stand in this position. If we don't have to play in the bass register, then we can move closer to the instrument, to its symmetrical line. With our hands, we control the two most important properties of the musical sound, volume and pitch. Volume is controlled by the firm, steady movement of the left arm toward and away from the left antenna. The pitch is controlled by an equally firm and steady movement of the right arm from our body towards the right antenna. and away from it. You probably notice that the farther away my right hand is from the antenna, the lower the pitch is. Let's find where a note is, listen to it carefully, then play it one octave higher. 
Еще октавой выше. And another octave higher. Then using the same pattern, we'll play back down. Now let's try to play smaller distances. For example, a scale. After you've familiarized yourself with the spacings of the pitches, try to play a simple melody, and at the same time, think about the distances which the melody moves up and down. Does it jump, or does it move smoothly? Now, as an example, here's a simple melody called Moscow Nights. As you've noticed, I was moving my fingers during that performance. This finger technique is necessary in order to avoid excessive movements of the right arm. Notice that we're using not only our fingers, but also our wrists. All finger positions are intermediate between two basic positions of the hands. Closed hand position with fingers almost making a fist and open position, arm extended towards the right antenna with open fingers. Let's try moving between these two positions. First we choose the note. Then we play a slow glissando across two octaves up to the open position. And down again to the closed hand. Now, once again. Now, let's play the same exercise across one octave. And now we'll stop on the notes of an arpeggio within this octave. To master your basic finger technique, you can practice these simple exercises. Let's call the positions one, two, and three. Or these arpeggios. Now, if you're going to play a simple melody, you may play just with your fingers, with minimal motion of your entire arm. Of course, we can still use our arm by moving it either slowly or fast. This depends on the pitch range of the melody. Rapid movements of the entire arm are used when, for example, you play an arpeggio across two octaves. In this case, you use your entire arm when you move from the first octave to the second. Now let's talk about the left hand. The left hand serves several functions. Attack, 
diminishing the sound, separating the notes, and separating musical phrases. To achieve these particular functions, we use only wrist movements. Now, let's practice this simple technique by using a firm rhythmical motion of the left wrist. When we're separating the phrases with the left hand, it means that the right and left hands do not work synchronously. Let's practice a very simple exercise. We will use one movement of the left hand while playing two or three notes with the right. Thus, the left wrist movements are very important for separating the phrases in music performance. Left wrist movements are used to conceal jumps by the right hand. Let's practice this very simple exercise. First we'll choose the note. Then we will play it with two different finger positions, say open hand position and closed position. We lower our left hand just slightly, but not all the way down. We will still keep legato between two notes and at the same time conceal glissandos during large pitch jumps. This is very important for performing a melody. Our next step is expression. The theremin is unique because of its sensitive and expressive sound. The ability to control expression and thereby realize different interpretations of a melody is the art of playing the theremin. Expression is imparted by the breathing of the left arm, the entire left arm not only the wrist. Crescendos and diminuendos performed with the left arm are the essence of the melody. With our right hand, we will find the pitch. We will try to hold it very steady and at the same time play a slow crescendo with the left hand. And now listen to this slow diminuendo. Now let's try to play two notes with the right hand with only one movement of the left. The left arm will move slowly and the right faster. Next, we'll try to combine the different movements of the left hand. At first, we will play two notes with the right hand while playing crescendo and diminuendo with the left, then the same two notes in the right hand with staccato in the left. Thank you. 
And now we'll try to play the melody and add to it the expression of crescendo and diminuendo. Vibrato is a very important element of musical expression. You can play music with vibrato or without it, but vibrato creates character in the music. Let's listen to a single pitch played with different amounts of vibrato. Without vibrato, it will sound very cold. With slight vibrato, it will be melancholic. If the vibrato becomes stronger, it will sound warmer. And with a wide vibrato, it becomes nervous. How do you produce vibrato? Vibrato is created by very small, shallow movements of the right hand, from the left to the right, not from front to back. Let's try to find this movement. First we choose a note. Then we try to make very weak, slow movements from left to right. After we find this movement, let's play it faster. And now back slowly. An important aspect of performing vibrato in the melody is that you have to find the note without vibrato first, and then start the vibrato if you want to add expression to the note. This well-known melody is a good example.
Swamp music is a piece that Lydia composed for synthesizer and theremin. As you will hear, swamp music uses the full pitch range of the theremin and takes advantage of the theremin's unique ability to produce wide pitch swoops as well as precise melodic tones. It's a wonderfully imaginative piece. Lydia uses her command of the theremin, along with her knowledge of contemporary composition, to create an intriguing sonic collage. Listen closely. You'll hear all sorts of swamp critters cavorting in the water. And if you listen really hard, you'll understand what they're saying to each other.
As an electronic musical instrument designer, I've been involved with theremins for more than 40 years. At the present time, we at Big Briar design and build several models of theremins. All of our instruments use contemporary analog and digital circuitry to recreate the playing characteristics and tone color of Professor Theremin's original designs. We offer instruments in a variety of cabinet styles and finishes. Of course, all of our instruments are precisely and ruggedly built to meet the demands of professional musicians everywhere.